We're taking you to Shanghai. You'll be amazed at how modern Shanghai is. 18 million people living within the city boundaries makes Shanghai the largest city proper in the world, according to the United Nations. There's a lot going on in this city. There's a modern city. There's the historic city. You've got the best of the new, the preserved historic sites, and it's really worth getting there. Showing you highlights of Shanghai, showing you the modern city. There are futuristic skyscrapers in downtown Shanghai. And there are also these wonderful old historic neighborhoods that are low-rise buildings, three stories, four stories high, where the people live, work, and play. They have done a magnificent job in Shanghai of preserving many of these historic neighborhoods, while at the same time developing new modern skyscraper apartment housing for the urban dwellers. They're really concerned about the environment, about greening the city. There are wonderful parks that are scattered frequently throughout the town. And you'll find that most of the vehicles in Shanghai are electric mopeds, which really forms an ideal kind of transportation. They also have a huge metro system that they just built. In the last 15 or so years, they've created 11 metro lines, and in the next 10 years, they're going to double the size of this amazing new subway system. After all, it's a city with a population of 20 million people. So they really need a heavy rail system to help them get around. They need a good, efficient street system. And they've got an elevated highway system that must be the most advanced in the world. It is truly incredible. You'll find elevated lanes crisscrossing right through the heart of town, and they're done in such a way that they are not really oppressive or dark or looming over you because they're quite high. They seem to be about the height of a six-story building. So they're way up there on slender pillars. Now back down on street level in the city, it's another story. It's a little bit chaotic, perhaps by Western standards, but it works just fine for the Shanghainese. It's a great city for walking, no question about it. The streets are so fascinating. For miles, for a couple of square miles in the center of town, it is just booming, it's bustling, it's full of life. There's shops, there's apartments, there's people on the sidewalks, there's unusual vehicles going by. Uh, these people are friendly. It's not threatening. It's very safe to walk through these streets. Not a problem. But just be careful when you're going on a crosswalk and look both ways. Make sure no car is turning. And at the same time, if you feel like jaywalking in the middle of a block and it looks safe, go for it. There's not a problem. There's people all over the place walking in the street in certain streets. The back streets are really quite pedestrian friendly. They do have a few pedestrian-only streets as well. The famous Nanjing is really a great boulevard for a century. It's been the main street of downtown Shanghai. And nowadays, Nanjing is six blocks of pedestrian heaven. It's really a lot of fun. There's big stores along both sides of it, and you've got these neon signs that come on in the evening. So you want to be sure to come to Nanjing at twilight and then at nighttime hang around for the light show. It's like Times Square. It's like the Ginza. It's like Shibuya at night. It's really a fantastic wonderland of fluorescent lighting and huge video screens and real high-tech stuff on Nanjing. Many of the people walking on this pedestrian lane are also tourists. Most of them are Chinese tourists from other parts of China. Especially with Expo, many, many Chinese from the countryside and from other cities are coming into Shanghai to experience the Expo. People's Park nearby, some luxury hotels, department stores. And then the second cluster of downtown is along Hawaii High Street. Now this is where we were staying in our tour. We stayed for about a week in Shanghai. 
The Ascot Hotel was brand new. It's part of a large international chain. Very comfortable. We want to give you 30 minutes. Okay? 30 minutes. So we meet here at 4.30 to go out for a walk. So Antonio helps us get checked in, hands out the keys, up to the rooms, freshen up, and then enjoy these splendid rooms. It's incredible. These are suites. Every room in the Ascot is a one bedroom suite with about 900 square feet, bigger than most apartments. Nice comfortable furniture. There's a kitchen with a sink and a refrigerator, but you don't really need to cook because breakfast is included and it's a wonderful breakfast display. They've got omelets cooked to order and the usual plus some very wonderful extras fresh fruits and juices, rolls, coffee, tea, and then some cooked foods in the morning, including fried dumplings, one of the specialties of Shanghai, and some steaming udon noodles to go with it, salmon fish cakes, cabbage and ham. This was quite a breakfast, so good that I hardly ate lunch or dinner for the whole week that I was staying there. The view from the breakfast room is beautiful. And Hawaii High Street is like the Rodeo Drive or the Fifth Avenue of the city. It's got the upscale stores, the Gucci, the Louis Vuitton, the Hermes. Oh, it's really a paradise for shoppers. And it's a great place for people watching. You've got a lot of the young trendies out here doing their shopping, the local Chinese with some money. And they are just spending up a storm, it would seem, to support these big luxury shops. Oh yes, it's a great place for people watching and you'll notice that most of the people on Hawaii High Street walking along are fairly young, mostly in their 20s and 30s. It's yuppie country. Surprisingly, China has a very affluent upper middle class that's growing. They estimate there is at least 100 million Chinese in the upper middle class and they've got some money because the people shopping here are really local Chinese rather than tourists. You just don't see that many foreign tourists when you're walking around in Shanghai. But then when you get one block away from Hawaii High Street, things change. Things get a little bit more normal, prices drop. You get two or three blocks away and the prices drop considerably. The quality is still good, you can buy clothing made in China for uh, prices, huh? a dollar and a half for a t-shirt, for uh, four dollars for shorts, five dollars for a simple cotton dress. You really do get some bargains out here in the side streets and you get the colorful life of the city along with it. It's really quite a package to be walking on these amazing local streets and it's just a block or two away from the glitzy shopping streets. You notice Hawaii High Park, it's very well utilized. People are relaxing, people are playing bandbitten, they're playing cards, mahjong, they're doing tai chi, exercises of various kinds. They are doing this walking exercise that looks a little bit unusual to us, but it's probably uh, great way for people to refine their sense of balance so they're not going to fall down and break a hip in their old age, stay healthy. And you've got the trees and the flowers and it's beautifully manicured and it's clean. Notice how clean everything is here. In fact, there's no graffiti in the city, for example. They really take pride in the city. I don't think it's so much that they're cleaning the graffiti off the walls. It just doesn't appear in the first place. There's a real sense of order and peacefulness and safety in this city, as well as a sense of a lot of fun, a lot of things to see. For the visitor, in a week or 10 days, you will be bombarded with sights. Get off the beaten track and go wander, and you will have a most enjoyable time. Have a look at the urban Planning Museum. This is a permanent museum in downtown Shanghai. It'll be there long after the expo, so you'll have a chance to see it whenever you get to Shanghai. 
one of several important museums in the city. And the Urban Planning Museum has got this phenomenal three-dimensional model of Shanghai as it exists today. This is not a futuristic model of what the city might become, although it looks like a city of the future, perhaps in outer space somewhere. But no, this is the actual buildings represented in a scale model representation. It goes about 80 feet across the floor and you can walk all the way around it. There's interesting lighting. The lighting comes on at night as well as showing you the buildings during the day. You can go upstairs to the balcony level and look down at the buildings. And it really gives you an insight into the incredible nature of this development of the city of Shanghai. And you can see that this is a well-planned city. They have really tried to develop it out in an orderly way. Being basically a communist country, they have control over the urban development. If there's a large block that they want to redevelop, well, then people move out, they're compensated, they're provided with some alternative housing somewhere in the city, and the construction begins. There's been so much construction in the last decade, they claim that Shanghai was using about 20% of the world's construction cranes. And at this point, a lot of that construction is finished. The city is looking very stable, perhaps because of the expo. They were accelerating construction schedules and then stopping a lot of the buildings during the expo itself. But it really does look like much of the central city is complete. It's done. The streets are beautiful. The growth in Shanghai has been nothing short of phenomenal. 20 years ago, just before the fall of communism, 1989, 1990, this was a low-rise city. Today, it's a high-rise city, perhaps with more skyscrapers than any other city in the world. Looking at downtown Shanghai,